Well, I wanted to ask yeah. you about Equus because oh, yeah. that was such a crazy left turn from expectation that even back when it happened, I remember thinking, well, that he's clearly trying to go as far in the other direction Yeah. to the point where, I mean, I thought it was a very brave and bold thing in theory to say, I'm going to test myself in a completely different arena and take on this dark, psychological, weird role that is so different than what I'm doing. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, I, again, I had the moment, like there was a headline printed very, very early on um, in, uh, like, well, I think when we were in rehearsals, it was talking about me doing the play and it was like, I think it was in the Express or something. It was just like, uh, crash, bang, what's that? The sound of a promising career coming to a grinding halt, uh, which was their you know, assumption of what was going to happen when I did Equus. Um, and I remember like looking around the room and looking at like Thea Sharrock, who just moved on from being the artistic director of, big, of, a, of a theater in London, and uh, John Napier and David Hersey and these amazing crew and Richard Griffiths. And I was just going, right. if I'm screwing up here, like. A lot of other really good people are screwing up too. So that's like, the, you know, we'll, we'll see. And, um, and yeah, I, I, I think I knew that like, for my first thing on stage, I couldn't do something that was kind of half, like it wasn't no. just to get from like as far away from Potter as possible, as much as to show that like, I was in it for like the right reasons, I guess, and wanted to really test myself. Because if you do, so, if you, if I'd done some just like nice, quaint English play, people would have still been like, "Well, you're not really showing us anything different." And, and then, and I have had directors say to me since that even if they didn't like see it at the time, that was knowing that that had happened, kind of put me on their radar as somebody that it was obviously willing to, you know, try stuff. Did you have any of that where people would like? try to throw you off your game or? We had some people like Wolf Whistle when me and Joe in London or me and Anna in New York got naked. So there was that, but there was one group of girls in New York who, because on Equus we had on stage seating as well, but it was raised. So it was like uh, sort of old surgical examination sort of theater seating. And I never left the stage. I, once I walked on, I, even if I wasn't in the scene, I'd just go to the, the there was like right. this block in the corner and I would sort of just lie on it or sit on it. Um, and these three girls just started talking to me. Like, while a scene is going on next to me, these three girls are going, Dan, 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 up here. And just like whispering me for the entire first act. And I eventually, and I think I gave them a couple of like, mm, scowling looks. <laughs> and then that didn't seem to Doing a play off. here. Oh, Play. And then, um, God, and that's did, horrible. That, and it did not, but that's the thing, it was coming out, they weren't trying to put me off, it was coming out of a genuine like, He's so close, we can just talk to him. Like, no, you can't. Um, and then I did also what I, I, in the play I just did, I, a phone went off, which is a very common thing to happen. Right. But it went off in the middle of, Bobby Cannavale has a speech about his, his character's dying mother and girls just want to have fun was the ringtone <laughs> that just like popped up at the, at the, like, the critical emotional moment of the play, out uh, of the speech when the theater was silent and this phone was like in the second row. It could not have been louder if it had been on stage with us. And it was just like, I fully just winced. I, Bobby just stayed the course magnificently, did not bat an eyelid, did not throw him. I'm sure I made a face and almost turned out I completely was like out of character for a second. God, it, there lies the difference between film and theater in that anything can happen. Yeah. Like I, I think when I was watching that thing of you and J.K. Rowling, she said the night she watched your yes, necklace. that did happen. That someone threw that. an owl on the stage. Yeah, someone threw an owl on the stage the night she was there and I was so embarrassed. And then she came back afterwards and made a joke that she had thrown it, which was, she sort of diffused the situation very, because I was quite embarrassed about it. Um, that it had happened when she was there, because it never happened any other time. No one ever threw an owl at me another time on stage, just when Joe Rowling was there for the night. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you want to see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out. <laughs>